Hi, my name is Evan Miller, and my paper is on the analysis of multiple steganography methods using MATLAB. Steganography is the art of hiding information. Basically, embedding a hidden message or a hidden image within another image, and only the recipient is aware of the, the hidden message. Uh, steganography is a pretty old technique. It dates back all the way to ancient Greece and Rome where people would carve messages into wooden planks and then cover them with wax so that when they got transported nobody would know the message was there and only the recipient would know to melt the wax. Uh, nowadays even terrorists use the technique of steganography to hide uh, messages and transfer them to other people. Uh, they do this on everything from images on public websites to YouTube videos. So. Uh, steganography essentially works by utilizing the noise bed of an image and what the noise bed is is basically the lower significant bits of the image. The RGB images are what we'll be talking about for this paper and they contain 24 bits per pixel one byte for each channel uh, red green and blue. So if we are gonna hide the hidden image in the lower two significant bits of the original image uh, two bits per byte, we would be able to hide six bits in each pixel. Now the reason this is possible is because each bit in a byte doesn't necessarily represent the amount of information that you would think. Contrary to common sense uh, telling you one bit out of eight represents one eighth of the information, due to the way the binary number system is set up, that isn't true. So the lower two bits here, bit zero and one, put together hold just over 1% of the total information in a byte, which is pretty negligible. And that's why we can use these lower two significant bits and have it not be visually identifiable to the naked eye. Uh, moving upward, even the third bit still only contains just over 3% of the total information. Uh, to illustrate this fact, I've shown an original image on the top left of myself and then on the top right, I've zeroed out the two lower significant bits. So you can see there's visually no difference between the two images. Uh, the bottom left is the original image with four lower significant bits zeroed out. So we're starting to see a little bit of a noticeable difference there, but not enough where somebody would become suspicious. Uh, and then the bottom right is the extreme, or towards the extreme of five lower significant bits zeroed and we can start to see uh, an information loss as five lower significant bits are about 10 or 11 percent of the the total information so we should expect some corruption. Uh, the first algorithm I implemented I call the basic LSB algorithm and it essentially just goes and places the hidden image directly in the lower noise bed of the uh, original image. Uh, step one we convert the hidden image into a, a row vector or a bit stream and then step two, we prepend a header onto the stream. And what that header does is it allows the decoder to, first of all, recognize the preamble and know that it, we, it has an image with another image encoded into it. Uh, it tells it how many bits we've utilized in the lower significant bits of the noise band per byte and the X, Y, and Z dimensions of the original image so the decoder can reconstruct it once it's extracted the hidden information. Uh, step three, it places the stream directly into the lower significant bits of the original image in a pattern shown on the bottom right. So each pixel is taken and a certain amount of bits per byte are used in the lower significant bits to hide the image. Uh, what I'd like to do now is flip to MATLAB and just show the execution of the basic algorithm. Um, first, I'll just go ahead and show two images, one that will be hidden and one that will be the original. And the hidden image is going to be the puppy dog. The bottom image of myself will be the original image that we embed it within. Okay, so this block of code uh, invokes the stag LSB encoder, which is the basic LSB encoder, uh, using um, number two to represent two bits per byte as an input parameter here. So we run that and I can see the original image here on the top and the encoded image with the hidden image within on the bottom. Uh, visually there is no difference between the two. And that bottom image has the image of that puppy dog encoded within it. Uh, 
the next step I'd like to show is what happens when we take uh, a greedy number of lower significant bits, in this case seven. So that's a fairly large amount of the original information in the image. And what we see is that it's there's quite obviously some visual distortion. And for this example, you can actually see the exact pixel, pixels that were utilized to store that hidden image in. So that uh, image of the puppy dog took about 50% of this image space using seven bits per byte. Um, lastly, I will go ahead and run the decoder. Um, that basically just invokes the decoding algorithm here. Uh, I'm going to save the encoded image that was spit out from the encoding function. And it will just display the image that it extracts. And as we suspected, it is the exact same as the original uh, encoded puppy dog. Now, moving on, um, the basic LSB algorithm presents one main problem, and that's noise. Uh, when noise is added into the original image, the header becomes corrupted, and the decoder is no longer able to uh, determine the XYZ dimensions of the hidden image or how many bits per byte were even encoded. So uh, the basic LSB algorithm fails 100% of the time with noise when any part of the header gets corrupted. So this uh, presents the need for a better algorithm and to combat that I created the improved LSB algorithm. Uh, basically what we do to survive the noise is add redundancy. This header here shows a lot of fields with uh, three dots and those indicate uh, repetition of the field previous to it. So essentially what you're seeing is the same preamble as before, only uh, the bits per byte, the X, Y, and Z dimensions are all replicated 10 times. And the hopes to, in this was that the decoder would have a chance to uh, hopefully have uh, the mode of these 10 fields uh, be uncorrupted such that the original value um, is the most common one. And uh, showing here, what I've done is I've encoded an image with the encoder, and then I added noise to the image using the mNoise function of MATLAB. And as was expected, the output images, the, the hidden images, once they were decoded, were a bit noisy, which makes sense because we added that noise. But the point is, the decoder was actually able to still reconstruct the hidden image uh, in the presence of this noise. So uh, one additional... Uh, improvement upon the, this algorithm is that uh, as an added, added input parameter, I allowed the decoder or the, the user to specify a percent of accuracy which the preamble had to meet. So for example, uh, you could enter 50% and that just says the decoder must match the header bits, uh, the preamble bits, within 50% accuracy uh, to continue decoding, otherwise abort. But as we can see, these noisy images were successfully decoded by the decoder. Uh, the third, tra uh, third algorithm I looked into was implementing a Haar Wavelet Transform algorithm. Uh, now the Haar wa Wavelet Transform is a ba basic wavelet algorithm, uh, wa basic wavelet transform uh, often used for image compression. Essentially what it does is it breaks the image down into four subsections uh, through filtering techniques. Uh, so what we see on the top left, um, um, the right image, is that the majority of the information in the wavelet coefficients remains in one-fourth of the image. So uh, essentially this presents us with three-fourths of the image where the wavelet coefficients have relatively low information. So what I did was I utilized these lower coefficients to store the uh, hidden image bits in. So step one of the wavelet transform algorithm is to take the Haar wavelet transform of the original image and this resulted in an image similar to what we saw in the previous slide where the top left contained the majority of the information. Uh, step two is I zeroed out the wavelet coefficients in the top right, bottom left, and bottom right portions of the transformed image and again those were the uh, low, uh, low threshold wavelet coefficients. Uh, now using the same redundant encoding header as is in the pr improved LSB algorithm, I used a spec specified number of uh, least significant bits um, to store the hidden image within the wavelet coefficients. And then it was as simple as performing the inverse Haar wavelet transform on the encoded image 
And that gave you back your uh, original image with the hidden image encoded within it. Uh, what I'd like to do now is flip back to MATLAB and show the HAR Wavelet Transform. So the first example here uses the HAR Wavelet Transform encoder. Um, similar to before, I'm using the original image, the puppy dog image, and two bits per byte of the wavelet coefficients. And what we get out is an image that's a slightly lower quality than the original uh, LSB encoder, but still visually fairly undetectable. Uh, so using two bits per byte with the Har Wavelet Transform had uh, vi visually had a pretty good result. Uh, moving up, uh, we can increase this to four bits per byte. And the result is a slightly degraded image uh, with a little bit more lines due to the inverse transform. And then here I did the extreme case again with seven bits per byte. And in this case, we see some uh, major corruption uh, when we take the inverse R wavelet transform. So to compare the techniques uh, discussed, what I did is I stress tested each one of them. Uh, what this means is I ran uh, each one of the decoder and encoder, uh, well, encoder and decoder processes with the addition of Gaussian noise a number of times and then took the average uh, mean squared error or peak signal to noise ratio. What I found was that in 10 tries on the basic LSB algorithm, there was a 0% pass rate. And as discussed earlier, this is due to the fact that once the header field becomes corrupted, the decoder just isn't able to reconstruct any of the uh, header fields and reconstruct the original image. Um, now on the top right, I've stress tested the improved LSB algorithm. And what we saw is that in uh, 20 tries, there was a fairly decent uh, successful pass rate um, by the encoder, uh, by the decoder to decode images that had a lot of Gaussian noise. So just like we saw in the previous pi uh, pictures of the, the noisy puppy dogs, um, even after adding noise to the encoded image, the decoder was still successful. Now, the stress testing results for the Har Wavelet Transform uh, were definitely better than the basic LSB algorithm, but what I found was in the exact same uh, similar levels of noise, it just didn't quite perform as well as the improved LSB algorithm. Now, it's important to note that the Har Wavelet Transform still used the redundant header, uh, which is what made the LSB algorithm, the improved version, so much better, just due to the nature of the inverse transform uh, the Har Wavelet Transform wasn't able to, to stand up as, as well as the improved LSB algorithm. So what I've shown in this, this project is that the basic steganography techniques can be pretty useful in hiding images or messages or even programs in any type of medium from uh, images to MP3s to YouTube videos and to a basic internet website. Uh, the basic technique, just utilizing the lower noise bed, isn't exactly robust in the presence of noise, and any bits that become corrupted uh, very easily ruin the image. Um, but what I also showed was by adding a little bit of redundancy into the header, we were able to vastly improve the results of the decoder in the presence of noise. Now, <clears throat> in the future, uh, it could be worthwhile to look into uh, encryption to protect the data and other types of uh, error correction and detecting techniques. But for the sake of this paper, uh, the focus was on basic steganography techniques, which was what was implemented. So I hope you enjoyed the presentation and that's it.